Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Katherine Haleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Say hi, Terry. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Terry and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. Yeah. So this week, we are going to talk about the West Wing Weekly podcasts. We should add podcasts to our intro, TV, movies, books, podcasts. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) <laughs> and other entertainment topics. Uh-huh. Anyway, so we're going to talk about the West Wing Weekly's uh, latest episode, which was an interview with Martin Sheen. Mm-hmm. Um, we are also going to talk about our challenge round pick, which in a last minute change was playing by heart, which we'll yes. explain when we get to. Mm-hmm. Um, but first, it was Cry Your Eyes Out Night on Dancing yes, with Stars. Yes, it was. Most Much weepiness. memorable year. Yeah. So. It was enjoyable. It was yeah. actually not... There were no rumbas for your dead relatives, so... <laughs> well, there were some dead relatives, though. <laughs> but there... Yeah, no rumbas. Yeah, well, I guess there was a Viennese waltz for your dead relative. But, uh... Yes. There were two. Because both... Was- Terrell and Lindsay. Oh, that's right. That's right. Terrell was commemorated a grandmother, important person with a Viennese waltz. So <laughs> it's just that kind of dance, I guess. Right. Only one of them had the mists of hiding footwork, <laughs> and that was Terrell. <laughs> yeah, Lindsay doesn't need that. She's pretty good. She is pretty good. I mean, again, I didn't need the baby hairdo that they. <sighs> Well, I guess I, I kind of was willing to give it a pass because she was supposed to be a child, I think, in the dance. Yeah, I know she was, but I still Not that didn't. she doesn't wear it like that all the time right. anyway, but <laughs> I, I heartily approve of of uh, Mark wearing a hat since it <laughs> disguised his, his ridiculous hair. hair. <laughs> <laughs> Let's work hats into every costume. Yeah, there you go. Until he cuts his hair. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that one was was really sweet, and she looked graceful, and it was it was it was cute how they had her standing on Mark's feet at the beginning. Right. I don't know if you saw that. I but, saw that. Yeah, so I thought that was nice. And... Yeah, I, I thought all the dances were actually pretty enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I didn't. There wasn't anything that was too non dancey. I mean, of course there were, but they were not egregiously non dancey. So they still looked yeah. pretty. Yeah, I uh, with Frankie and Whitney, you know, they started, they had to go first. And yes. I, and it was a quick step, and I thought it was pretty, but it didn't, I didn't quite get how it all hung together as a, <laughs> as a story, as, a, you know, it didn't, it didn't really work for me. <laughs> You've had nine concussions. Let's do a dance that has a lot of jumping. Yay! Wow, so. I know. <laughs> So that's tough. With but, lots of steps you know, to like, remember. In some of the other ones, like the Jordan one, I mean, obviously he's just good. But yeah. I, yeah. it somehow the choreography, the music, and the story all really gelled together in that yeah. one. Yeah, that um, was very pretty. And I loved, the, I loved the lifts that they did. They all mm-hmm. looked graceful. None of them looked like he was hoisting a bag of flour over his head. Right. Um, you know, it's it was very nice. And I liked the tempo change partway through. Uh, that was really nice. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, he's really good. So, <laughs> so in that one, it I just... I don't hold it against him. Yeah. That one, it just hung together really yeah. well for me. Yeah. Um, some of the other ones, you know, I mean, they. I, I agree with you. I liked them. They were nice. They were pretty. They were well done. Um, but that one in particular stuck out to me. Yeah. And working. you know how I feel about contemporaries. So I know. For me to like it <laughs> is really saying something. What I what I noted about Nick and Peta that also did contemporary oh, yeah. is it was dramatically barefoot. Their <laughs> dance. <laughs> yeah, you got to be barefoot for contemporary. There mm-hmm. are rules. I think there's there's a, a it's codified, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, that one wasn't so. Up. They keep putting Peta and Nick in the bottom two. Do you think they're really legit in the bottom two, or somebody's just just ticked at them and wants them to look bad. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe he's not getting that many votes and they think if they keep putting him in jeopardy, people will vote for him. Right. I don't Good know. Question. He's, he's perfectly fine. He's just, I, I think that the reason 
spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't watched the episode yet, that Derek went home is just, he's perfectly fine. But mm -hmm. he's just kind of there, you know? He doesn't right. doesn't have a lot of spark. And really, honestly, for all the fact that he's part of the big two married couples storyline, Nick is kind of there too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Vanessa is there. And right. Nick's sort of there. Mm -hmm. So... You know, yes, it could it could really have been either one of them, but I figured it wouldn't be Nick because of this whole conceit they've got going on. Yeah. So, but Derek, it was very pleasant getting to know you, and good luck yeah. to you. But I'm probably not going to notice you're not there next week. Aww. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> there was another guy. He seemed nice. What Whatever was his happened name to him again? <laughs> <laughs> but that means no more Sharna. I mean, that's I'm sure true. We'll, I'm sure I was we'll thinking about that. Her, I will miss her more than him. She's gotten a couple, a little bit of a bad run of partners, I think. But uh, 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 but he wasn't bad. You know, that's the thing. No, it's such a nice. No. It's such a nice group. They're all perfectly nice, and you know, there's a few that stand out. But really, there's nobody that I'm thinking. When are we going to get rid of this person? Right. So it's kind of hard. To think, to get to that part of the evening and go, oh, yeah, somebody, somebody loses I tonight. Oh know, yeah. Because <laughs> last week we didn't have to do somebody that. Somebody who's just bared their soul and wept tears on the stage. We're going to say, nah, no more from you. his daughter was there. I felt so bad yes, that for yes. Derek. Well, you know? yeah, I know. That's, he just seems like, a, like I guess Sharna was saying that he's, keeps his emotions under wraps as part of his you know, Being athletic an athlete. Mm -hmm. thing. And so he probably would have been good if he could have unwrapped a little of that. Right. But, you know, possibly some people are just not that emotive, you know, mm -hmm. they're just good guys who go through their day and <laughs> it's just don't really have anything that's going to make them stand out on a dance competition show. Drew pulled right. out some stops. What, yeah. what week is this that he's brought the brother in already? I know. I would have thought he would save that for another week or two. But, you know, I guess most memorable year is uh, it's a good one to pull it out for. Yeah, and it was, it was, you could tell, you know, that he had had more training than his brother. Yes. Like, yes. It, he definitely, it made him look better <laughs> having his brother there who was, like, yes. barely keeping up. Yes, so. was this the strategy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You're not as good as some of the guys on the, the dance floor. Well, let's bring somebody in to dance next to you who's not as good. Who's really not as good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's brotherly love. Man, come come on stage with me and look crummy so that I'll <laughs> right. look good, will you please? Thank you. <laughs> yes. Also, I did not think that the blue satin suit did anyone yeah. any favors. And the blue shoes, yes. Whoa. That was not attractive. Although Emma looked smashing, as she always does. Yes. In her tiny little shorts version. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh... Who else? Uh, uh, well, so Nikki and Artem, she had those those silks <sighs> yes. that she did. And, yeah, you know, that was pretty neat, I thought. Yeah, I really could take or leave them. You know, yeah. if I'm, I'm dividing it into people I would miss and people I wouldn't miss. Right. Yeah, which is okay. Right. Um, but I know somebody who does those silks things, like, for real. She does... I don't know what exactly, where exactly she does it, but um, she's always posting pictures of herself on Facebook, hanging upside down from the mm -hmm. ceiling of something, playing her mm -hmm. trombone. So oh, wow. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> impressive. So when I see that, I'm going, eh, <laughs> right. I know someone who does that better than you. <laughs> but uh, mm. shout out to Julie, who I'm sure does not listen to this podcast. But, um, and... Yeah, so that was a dance that happened. And who else? <laughs> yeah, I thought that... Terrell's that's... was okay. Derek's was... went. Yeah, you know, I think Sharna tried really hard there to put something out that he would look mm -hmm. peppy with. And, I mean, he certainly did the more contemporary-looking dance parts. Yeah, his was supposed to be jazz. A little more engaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Sasha and Gleb was a foxtrot. I... I thought it was sort of unremarkable. Like, I did Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, sure. It was. <laughs> At least there was more dancing than last week. Yes. They didn't yes. stop to bake something. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. It's already. more a dance than a skit, so oh, dear. good job. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody in the, I should write down names of people who say things in the chat room I'm in so I can give them Credit the appropriate them. shout out. Yes, <laughs> but somebody said they think that Gleb and Keo had the same problem, which is that they are probably very good choreographers and could choreo- choreograph great for other pros, but they can't choreograph for regular people who don't really know how to dance. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think that may be so because they just, just lacks something. You know, you have to, you have to not only choreograph something that, that they can do, but that makes them look good. And that's a really hard thing. I think Lindsay always does a really good job of that. Right. You know, she's had a wide range of abilities, but she always choreographs something that makes them look good. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Although some of the things she did last year, David made him look silly, but that was what was called for. So, um, yeah. you know, I remember when she had, what's the, the, the guy from Alex, right? Who just was like, not even really a celebrity, just a guy. Oh, the one from the train. <laughs> from the train. Yeah. yeah Alec. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alec. Right. And, you know, she, she showcased him really well for what he could do, which was mostly lifting her up well. Right. Um, so, yeah, I feel like Gleb is not really doing Sasha any favors. Mm-hmm. Maybe if if it's not somebody he can take a shower with on stage, he really doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Eventually, right, I will and- stop mentioning that dance. It was just, it sticks yeah, in my whoa. mind. <laughs> well, and I mean, that works with the, the sort of theory because Jana had... You know, she was a performer. Yes. She was, I mean, she was a singer, but she was, yeah. and, and Sasha's an actress, but still, Jana was more somebody that he could choreograph Beth. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, yes. It's had a combination of upbeat and downbeat stories, I guess. And I mean, Vic- Victoria's, right? She was the last one. Yeah. She, yeah. I think she did very well. I liked the way they started it. And, I you know, still can't quite figure out how she's dancing without being able to feel her legs, but she's doing well. And I yeah. think Val is disguising whatever limitations there are nicely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it made me think, you know, wheelchair ballroom dancing is a thing. There's a whole, there's a Paralympic, I think, sport of it. I think... And- um- didn't Cheryl or Carrie Ann mention that at the Maybe end? Maybe so, yeah. And I know that, that um, I guess Victoria was saying when she was, before she was able to walk, she was saying she wanted to be the first contestant on a wheelchair. One of these years, they're going to do that. Yeah, they should. It's, you know, and, and the people who get ticked off when people with disabilities come on and then dance in a different way will be apoplectic well, but yes. <laughs> but it will be interesting it'll be interesting to see in the same way that it was interesting to see how Niall could dance without being able to hear the music and yeah. uh, you know it's it's a thing it's it's and I felt like they were doing a little bit of the you know the way he was he wasn't just pushing around they were doing mm-hmm. dancerly things with the wheelchair yes so I liked that and uh so we can dry our tears and move on to Disney night I guess now that's right (laughs) coming up so yeah all right well we will say goodbye to most memorable year for another year yes (laughs) i'm still looking forward to sooner or later jordan's gonna like like do something hamilton something hamilton please (laughs) they'll have that horrible band singing some (laughs) hamilton song (laughs) Oh dear, maybe that's why it's not happening. But. Yes, I really don't need them singing, through, you know, my shot or something like that. <laughs> Could oh, be boy. painful. Mm. Then again, maybe a song from Greece. Yeah. Well, we'll <laughs> see. Remains to be seen. So yes. we'll move on to West Wing Weekly. We so as we last... When we last spoke, <laughs> audience, <laughs> we did not know exactly what was going to happen on the West we Wing movie. We didn't. And of um, course, yeah. they messed us up. <laughs> yeah, because we thought we were going to watch the first episode of the new season, season four. But no, they decided to give Martin Sheen his own special episode, which, you know, which, fine. He is course. the president, I guess. That's okay. <laughs> um, and he was very like, your slightly daffy grandpa. <laughs> yes, he was, wasn't he? Yes. That's exactly what I thought, too. 
you know, but it was enjoyable hearing him talk, tell stories yeah. about it. Yes, and it was very cute when um, on I saw it on Facebook. They they showed him the, yes. the song that they put together with Lynn right. and Miranda, and he was I like, saw that. How did you get him to do that? He was <laughs> so impressed. And amazed. And that it was, was very adorable. Cute. Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. And I felt like Josh Molina was just really excited to have him there and wanting to talk to him and, and he was, he seemed to constantly be breaking in with things and Right. Um so whether that was because he needed to move the conversation along or he was just really happy to be talking to him, I'm not sure. Right. But uh it was it was I enjoyed listening to it. It was good. But I have to say, somewhat off the topic, but we have listened to Josh and Harishi do ads for meal services, for beds, I think, yeah, for watches. Squarespace, for watches, which they've done gamely. But I got to think that before they record those promos for Designated Survivor, <laughs> they must have to hit their heads against something a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they have to so convincingly say it's just like the West Wing, and they. Mu- I, I don't know if their super sincere delivery is meant to be secretly snarky or what, right. but it makes me laugh every time because Designated Survivor is a perfectly fine show, but in no way other than the fact that it stars a president. Right. Is it <laughs> anyway similar to the West Wing? I mean, kudos to the ad person who thought about buying time on that podcast Mm because it's a wonder from their point of view it's a wonderful match right but oh my gosh (laughs) it just cracks me up every time i hear them so enthusiastically promoting the keeper sutherland show if if yes any just like martin sheen (laughs) if any show is right for our audience it's this (laughs) you lie (laughs) <laughs> and you're throwing all your other... Wood. Do you really like the food? Maybe you don't, because I know you don't really like that show. So. <laughs> but if this anyone wants st- us to advertise I that know, show, it's like, we'll We would do be it. happy to lie. We'll lie with just as much enthusiasm, or possibly more, <laughs> for a few bucks. <laughs> Absolutely. We just want to pay for our hosting, you guys. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We don't ask for much. <laughs> <laughs> we have no challenge coins. We, we just want handouts. And yeah. ads. We, we could sell you a pen or a we mug. We could. That's true. If you want. That's true. <laughs> if you start clamoring for them, people, we will sell That's them right. To you. We're listening. <laughs> just say the word. So. <laughs> what, this, is, this can be a speed round question is, what TV show could we talk about being just like our podcast or something yeah. just perfect for our podcast audience what tv show would that be dancing with the stars apparently. american housewife there you go there you go see american housewife call us <laughs> give us there a call. you go we're here speechless actually wouldn't be a bad match mm-hmm. i totally. could do some justice to that yes, but that would did. actually be a good show to recommend right I, uh, I watched you would a little be, of Designated you would be Survivor. Su- sincere. I don't mean to slur Designated Survivor. I watched a little bit. It was perfectly fine, but right. it is in no way in the mold of the West Wing, <laughs> and in no way shares the same audience <laughs> for the same reasons. Anyway, right. so it was an enjoyable interview. Uh-huh. After I make that digression, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, and seeing. Like I said, seeing that little video was cute, which yes. we'll have to try to find and find link a to. link to. Yes. And um, just hearing a little bit of his backstory. I didn't know all of Like, I liked when he was imitating his dad. Yeah. <laughs> his dad's, like, thick Spanish accent. That was very funny. Yeah, all that sweet. backstory was very nice, talking about his brother and all that. Was, oh, yeah, that was yeah. quite a story. His yes. brother, the Vietnam vet. And, right, right. Mm-hmm. Bumping it was, in, it, it was interesting because you know he bumped into he ran into someone in a store and <laughs> the person recognized him but it was only because of his brother that he yeah. wanted to it, it wasn't like you're Martin Sheen like you're on the West Wing it was you're Martin Sheen your brother <laughs> yeah really <laughs> thought that's pretty cool so. yeah, it was that was and the stories about the American president mm-hmm. uh, were interesting and uh, just. Uh, Always fun when they get a cast member on to really talk. 
Right. Which, if they will finally get into season four, guys, come on, <laughs> move it along. They will have a cast member on every week. Yeah. Not that many more episodes to go before Will Bailey enters the scene. That's right. So, okay, well then we'll move on also. Yes, we will. <laughs> From the West Wing <laughs> to Yes. So our let's talk about round. our challenge round. When the West Wing looking folks decided to make this a special Martin Sheen episode, not only did they screw up our West Wing weekly watch on which we thought we would be watching the first episode of season four, but I had carefully calibrated my challenge rounds so that on the week when we saw Amy Adams in the first episode of season four, which by the way, funny that Martin Sheen was all Amy Adams was in that? I had no idea. No clue. (laughs) I guess he didn't have any scenes with her. No, 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 no. She's out in the cornfields with Mm -hmm. Josh and Toby. But um, it it also screwed... I had carefully calibrated our challenge round so that we would be watching an Amy Adams movie the same week we saw the Amy Adams episode. So now, of course, we didn't see the Amy Adams episode this week. So we have switched to a different movie and we will watch June Bug, the Amy Adams movie, next week for reasons we will talk about in a little bit. But I did update, unlike other podcasts I could mention, I did update <laughs> our show notes with complete information about what we would be doing. That's right. Content. And so hopefully if there is anybody out there who actually follows what we're doing, Y'all saw that we made that switch. If not, keep June Bug in your head. We're going to talk about it next week. This week we're talking about a movie called Playing by Heart, which is from 1998, which has a really impressive cast of recognizable people and is, I would say, considerably less than the sum of its parts, Mm -hmm. but still enjoyable for many reasons, intentional and not intentional. I actually own the DVD of this, and I cannot remember now whether I saw it in the theaters and liked it so much that I bought it or that I just saw the people who were in it and thought, this should be a good one. I'll just buy this and bring it home, which one did back in the days of DVDs before they were streaming. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you bought things you'd already seen that you liked. And sometimes, you know, if something was in the bargain bin, you took a chance on it. It might have been that. (laughs) It's really... (laughs) It could. I could see this ending up in the bargain bin. (laughs) Yeah. It's really not great. But I think it stands out for a couple of reasons. One is just the... Oh my gosh, it's that person-ness of the cast. Yeah. Uh, It's also a chance to see people very early in their career. I think Angelina Jolie had just made a bit of a splash in Gia when this came out. And then right after this, she was in... um, Oh, I just forgot the name of the movie. Anyway, she was in something that I think she got an Academy Award nomination for. So she was just hitting. And so I think this was the first thing I ever saw her. And it's like, oh, it's that girl that I've been hearing about. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so that was kind of cool. And she certainly grabs the screen and with both hands and squeezes it. So it's a big debut or a big, not not a debut, but if you, if this is the first thing you saw her in it, in you remember her from it yes uh and also i think it shows us the road not taken for john stewart the daily show had not <laughs> never come along man yeah. could he have had a career in romantic comedies he was just the most adorable thing in the world in this every time he had they gave him all the good lines and he was just yes. so cute um i could have seen him having a little uh a little run in that i think that the daily show stole that away from us That's but uh, i remember him fondly from this and, uh, you know, and then it also has s- all- amusing to watch now, I think, because even though it's only like not quite 20 years old, man, is it dated. You know, oh, you have yeah. a meet cute around the girl needing a quarter for a payphone. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, cordless and- phones around the house that look like the size of a brick. Yes, and then later you have um, the one character, Jillian Anderson character, calling her home phone to get her messages. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had a lot of the. I mean, I'm, I'm, I started watching it, and it's, they're, they're like watching Jay Leno on TV, and I said, "Well, well, that dates it." Right. And then Harvey Weinstein's name came up on the on the screen. And I said, "Well, that dates oh, it." Boy. <laughs> this particular week, that should come up, yeah. but. Um, You know, but did you, I don't remember if I spoiled this for you or not. Did you realize that these people were all going to wind up being related? Um, At some point, I decided that 
oh yeah, these three are sisters. Yeah. And they are the children of you know, the older couple. I did I did figure that out at some yeah. point. Um yeah. just from them talking about my sister this and my sister that. Right. Like, and they mm. started dropping dropping since I knew going in, I was, you know, seeing when they were dropping hints, like the first anger ball, you go, Well, everybody's gonna say that and then you're gonna know they all know right. each other because why else would they say something right. like that? And, and they all have as, big dogs and Right. And as soon as the um Jillian Anderson can- character says that her she was married to someone who ended, who turned out to be gay. Yeah. And, oh, that's that's the Jay Moore character. That's where that puzzle piece goes. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so. so it all kind of falls in. Um, I mean, it was sort of like a a love actually scenario. Yes. You know, yes. where it's like that's right. This one goes with that one. Goes with this one. <laughs> I mean, which I yeah. guess is it's it's happens in a lot of movies, but yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a certain certain of these little, I mean, it was it's very vignette-y. It just pops back and forth around all these different mm-hmm. couples, and, which is good. So if there's one storyline you don't care for, you don't really have to stick with it for very long. Somebody else is going to be on your screen. Right. Uh, poor Dennis Quaid, I think, had the most thankless role. Yeah. I think he was he was not good when he was pretending to be somebody else, and he was not good when he was playing the character self. Mm -hmm. But I had to laugh there. At the end, when he and Madeline Stowe are like under a gazebo or something, and and he takes off his glasses and he asks her if he wants to dance, and this great Dennis Quaid wolfish smile comes up, and I'm like, this is like the thing at the end of the movie where the girl takes off her glasses and lets down her hair and she's suddenly gorgeous. (laughs) All of a sudden she's beautiful. Oh my gosh, no way. It's like he takes off his glasses and all of a sudden it's Dennis Quaid. Hey! I'll go for that guy. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) But the rest of it, and and her character was not particularly appealing either, I don't think. No, and then I felt really terrible for the... Um, Anthony Edwards yes. character that like we're having an affair okay we're not having an affair anymore and also make sure to to see me Saturday at my parents big party yes. like that was mean yes and he's like the last puzzle piece to fall into place and they do this pan up like from his crotch up to his face I'm like that's not nice no I did not I like felt ugly, really bad little... for Poor old Mark Green. Yeah, <laughs> poor being old treated Mark that Green. Way. <laughs> that was not nice. Also, but... who was paying for that expensive hotel room? Because yes, I, uh, it has to be her. But what yeah. is, where where does she go? Oh, I guess he he makes video games, so I guess they're loaded. I don't know. I don't know. These but are things we don't the, ask about. The minister is definitely not. <laughs> no, <paying> I think <laughs> this kid's in daycare. I don't think he's paying yeah. for it. No. Some of that video game money going into that, I think. <laughs> you have quite an imagination. <laughs> she goes, what? <laughs> Someone said the magic word. Yeah. Mm. And then he took off his glasses. That's right. Anyway, the, the, the tiny bit of tie-in this has to anything we're watching now is that I thought about it for the return of Dancing with the Stars because it was originally titled... Dancing about architecture because of that story that Angelina oh, Jolie I tells see. like three times in this thing. Yes, we did hear that many, many <laughs> times. Somebody really liked that little metaphor, but or whatever it would be. Is that? Um, that I feel like I've heard that before. Like, is I was, that? Tr- yeah, I was trying to look it up today, and it, it, it looks like there are a whole bunch of different variations of it. Okay. Of, of the basic something about something is like dancing about architecture or. or you know, different combinations of those words mm-hmm. and are attributed to many different people. It is okay. not unique to this movie, for sure. Okay. But, um, you know. Yeah, it felt, that it definitely felt familiar. So. Yeah, yeah. And they really wanted you to remember that. Yes, they <laughs> sure did. <laughs> so the opening credits, and then she tells it again, and then he references it later. Yeah. So, oh, and anyway. Oh, he was playing the trumpet at the party. <laughs> Is that I did that I did not notice. Yeah, they they I did not notice it. the trumpet player. Did At they? The okay. And Ryan Phillippe says, "Is that the trumpet player, your friend?" <laughs> <laughs> I totally missed that. Shall we tell that little story again? <laughs> tell it one more time. Maybe there's somebody here. Right. Somebody else needs to hear it. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> anyway, I did enjoy revisiting it, though. Even yeah. as I was saying, 
you know, there's many ways in this is, which this is not very good, but it's kind of fun seeing all these recognizable people walk through it anyway. Very yes. writerly. Some of those lines, it's like, no human being would ever say that <laughs> in that way. Which, of course, we I, I think about Sorkin too, but with Sorkin, it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And with this, not so much. But <laughs> still, if you're looking for a romantic comedy to amuse yourself on an afternoon... And you yeah. want to see a lot of people that you recognize a lot, doing a lot. stuff. <laughs> a lot, a lot. It's like one of those casts where you look, wow, how come I've never heard of this movie? Look at all these people in it. Yeah. And then you watch it and you know why. Yeah, it was hard for me to buy Jon Stewart just because. Really? You know, uh, well, just because he's so familiar to me now as who he is now. I guess. I mean, he just yeah. he just is that guy so yeah. it's it's hard to to picture him yeah this know. came out right i guess pretty close to when he started doing that because he right. was it was still john stewart from the faculty so he was having his little movie career at that time <laughs> right but uh i did enjoy him in it and i thought that he got all the best lines and delivered them well mm -hmm. even though she was not is not one of her most prickly. engaging performances. Prickly, prickly, prickly yes. to the point where you say, "Do you got you other women?" <laughs> <laughs> then you call somebody else. You yeah. know, you seem you seem too nice to pursue this. Mm -hmm. Means he's got issues. Yeah, but he yeah. likes her dog, so it's all good. Yeah, her giant dog, Barbie. <laughs> Very good. Okay, this is a good movie for so. the giant dog wranglers. Yes. They just called up and said, we need about 10 giant dogs to be in various different sets that we're using. Mm -hmm. And one really yes. mean looking cat. <laughs> yeah, that was not an attractive cat. <laughs> okay, so, so as you were explaining before, we're going to double up on the Terry challenges. Yes. So that we can watch Junebug next time. Mm -hmm. Starring, or not starring, but featuring Amy Adams. Wet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, so. Yeah. You could say starring, too. She's, okay. I don't, I don't know exactly. I haven't watched it in so long. She may or may not be the lead, but she is possibly the most memorable thing about it. So, you could say starring. Okay. But anyway, and then we will use the fact that we're doubling up on mine to give me an extra week to do your next one, which will be a book. So right. do we want to tell people what the book's going to be in case they want to have a little time to read it too? Sure, we can. Um, it's called A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. Um, it, I believe, won a Pulitzer Prize. It won, okay. it won a big prize. Um, it won something. Yes. <laughs> and it... But it's it's not too long. It's a pretty fast read. It um, jumps around in time quite a bit. Um, so I don't know. Okay. I was just, I was a, it was a fun read. So we are going to do that for yes. two weeks from now. Right. So we have two weeks to read. Yes. So, and but for it's for next week, it's Junebug, um, the next episode of Dancing with the Stars, and we think we hope. for real this time. <laughs> Episode one of West Wing, season four, 20 Hours you know in America. If they put it off another week, we're just going to watch it anyway. I already watched it. Forget them. You know what? We give them this promotion on our little podcast. I watched it like two they, weeks What ago. thanks do we get? <laughs> oh, you have to watch it again. <laughs> you just watched part one, though, right? You haven't watched I part two yet. I only watched part one. Yeah. Okay. So, part two. Anyway. Some good stuff. 20 Hours in America, part one. Yes. And that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcasts so you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and weekly group chats. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Terry. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Gavin. <laughs> I waited for you to say goodbye before I told you to say goodbye. Okay. I, I wait for my cue, you know. I'm not just going to jump <laughs> in. I'm not going to jump in. All right. <laughs> goodbye, everyone. <laughs>